Hi, hello and welcome to another episode of the Wu Mao Show, where we share with you what it is like to live and work in China. Today, I am joined by Mr. Noel Li, somebody who works uh, here in China as well. And uh, today we're going to be discussing a topic uh, that is um, quite sensitive, which is uh, 9-11 um, and the consequence to the world. So let me start by uh, welcoming uh, Noel to the show. Noel, how are you? Hey, Fernando. Thanks for having me. In fact, uh, we just met uh, a few minutes ago. We are here in Shenzhen Airport and uh, mm -hmm. Fernando is actually going on a trip. And I just thought, hey, why don't I come see you off at the airport and we can do a bit of your live show here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we run this idea uh, in the Wumao group show, uh, Rumo, the Wumao group show, uh, and uh, we decided, well, let's meet at, at the Sanjay Airport since it's so close to you. Um, so also, I would like to welcome each and every one of you guys um, who have joined and are watching right now. Make sure to hit the like button. Welcome to the show. Those of you who are watching on a, on a um, playback, also welcome to the show. If you, if you like the content of my channel, consider subscribing. And um, let's get right into the topic. Oh, also, Noel's yeah. channel, right? <laughs> Caliber yeah. Wings, Noel Lee. Um, <clears throat> all right. Um, this is going to be a relatively um, short, very factual video. Um, we we want to talk about the things that we know. First of all, um, I would like to say that this is a day in which we should remember all the people who have um, who passed during during this event uh, but I would also like to take a moment to remember all the people who continue to die throughout the world because of 9-11 those people are often not mentioned um, that's my initial thought uh, what about you Noel? well um, for me definitely I share I echo your, your sentiments as well it's definitely a event that really shook or shaped the world, at least in terms of air travel, in terms of security, in terms of getting all paranoid, uh, and it continues to be, right? We talk about how safe the world is, but is it really that safe if we are still constantly being, uh, you know, having in the back of our mind that something could happen at any point of time, as long as there's a lapse of security, a lapse of concentration, and of course, having that certain small amount of insanity that could be in the minds of people to do things that results in terror. So, yeah, we're still in, you know, uncertain times. Yep, it is true. Um, well, to, to start talking about 9-11 um, and how it changed the world, you have to start with 9-11. Uh, um, there is a lot of uh, conspiracy theories out there about 9-11 and um, I don't want to dwell into that but I would like to point people's attention to questions that are not clearly answered. So I'm going to show you uh, one of the things that took place on 9-11. We all saw planes hitting the, um, uh, the, um, the towers. We all saw um, the plane, the, the towers actually collapsing. So there are certain things that we all saw with our own eyes, but there are also things that we haven't been able to see. And that's what concerns me the most about all the conclusions that we make and all the, the chest pounding that we, we hear from a lot of people uh, regarding this war on terror. So um, I would like to start uh, by showing you guys a very short clip of what for me, is the core of my questions regarding 9-11. So let me start by showing you this clip, which is um, the only video that has been released by the Pentagon um, from the airplane, well, the alleged airplane, you know where I'm going when I say alleged, that hit the Pentagon. And we're gonna discuss some of those things. So let me play this video very quickly. This video is the only video that has been released by the U.S. government after the investigation that have taken place 
about that plane hitting the Pentagon. My question to most people is, do you see a plane hitting the Pentagon? Um, I pass the question up to our audiences. You can leave it in your comments. Um, I, but I will ask you as well, Lee, um, Noel, what, what do you think? Do you see a plane there? There's, there's a little bit more evidence and I'm gonna show you in a second, but what do you think? Yes, I've actually also dwelt into some, you know, research about 9-11. Um, and that is also one of the footage that I guess I saw on, online. And uh, yeah, the question is, Pentagon is supposed to be a very well-secured location. I'm sure that equates to many cameras. And all we got is just one camera, one angle. And even the most low resolution of cameras would have captured you know, a commercial liner, even if it's like traveling at what, uh, 500 knots, 300 knots, I don't know, you know, at that kind of yep. speed. So, but we saw nothing that at the naked eye could see, which mm -hmm. is uh, kind of strange, actually. Yeah. Um, I, I find it very, very interesting that when I take photos of that particular video that we just saw, um can you uh do you guys uh hear as well for some reason my phone has gone uh has frozen i think i'm good you hear me clearly so far yeah so far i'm good okay let me see um noel can you go on for yes. one second i'm gonna go back and come back in okay give me one sure. second all right all right, guys, so we are here in, uh, you know, Sinjin International Airport. Uh, I got in uh, this morning and we had a bit of a coffee with Fernando. Um, yeah, he's heading off uh, somewhere in China for some work. So we are just sort of having this live stream to discuss uh, this topic. Yeah. Welcome back, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, some glitch with the phone. Um, all right. So I wanted to show you this couple of pictures, okay? This is a picture taken from, from that video. As you can see, this is the second part. I want you to see the bottom right. This is the picture before anything happens, right? Yep. And this is what we see next. That little black spot, that little white spot. So let me go back. Nothing there something there yeah two questions about this photo two questions about this picture two two things that are important to 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 remind people the pentagon is a four-story building a plane yes. like you can see here is probably two stories tall or three stories tall this proportions the sizes don't don't fit if you know what i mean the second thing, and the, the other picture that I want to show you, is a, a, a video uh, recreation that has been made. Now, in, in, in this video, you can actually see how, how high the plane was going. And that actually does not represent the level that that white thing we saw in the picture was at. I'm not yeah, a pilot. It's almost ground level, yeah. Exactly, I'm not a pilot. Look, this is what the last, the last frame of that video shows. Yes. It was as if the plane yeah. is gliding or flying almost like uh, five inches above the ground, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's, it's imagine how talented, we, we, we are told that these people uh, went to fly school in Florida, right? And that they were no good at flying. Um, so imagine somebody who has never flown a plane that big, a Boeing, right? The amount of skill that it would take to actually fly it that low to hit the first floor, the second floor, of a four-story building, of a, a plane that size. When I think about <laughs> what I would see is, is just, just crashing down, you know, just, just 
not like landing it, but just slam it into a, a, a building. But that's not what I see. Um, the other thing is, a lot of people question, well, what about, what about the planes that hit the, the towers? Did you see a plane hitting the towers, uh, Noel? Um, well, again, when I got the news, we were actually in Singapore. I was actually getting commissioned to be a captain. Uh, so, yeah, only, only on the CNN reports that we see being televised. And of course, I went back to look at, uh, you know, videos on, on the event. And what I saw was actually not conclusive for me. But I do have people who told me that they are in, they were in New York at the time, time and they did see the plane in the building. So I don't know. I, for me, I can't conclude. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, I did see planes hitting the, the, the towers. That's to me evidence that I can see with my own eyes. Um, I was uh, watching this on TV, the second tower, well, when the second tower was hit, I saw that live and you could actually see a plane flying into those. Mm. But my, my only point of contention is with the Pentagon. The Pentagon... Hold on, hold on, Fernando. The question I just verified is, yeah? that the, uh, it was a 757 that mm -hmm. hit the Pentagon and a 757 yeah. is pretty big. So you tell me that little picture. Let me show you the picture again one more time. You tell me if this looks like a uh, uh, like, like a 757 no, that's compared not a to a four-story building. No, no, sir. I don't think so. That's not a 757. So uh, that's, yeah. that's an issue. And these kind of investigations, they get locked up by Congress or whatever. And you only know the truth 20, 30, 40, not 20, because today is the 20th uh, <laughs> year of, Maybe of, not uh, even, not of even, this event. Right? 30, yeah. 40, 50 years afterwards. But the most concerning thing is what took place because of 9-11. Because of 9-11, yeah. you have now, for example, in America, something like it, the Patriot Act. Are you familiar with what the Patriot Act is? Uh, I heard about it, but I'm not too sure about the details. Okay, basically is um, the right from the government to, to, to look into your communications, to look into what you do in order to protect you from terrorism. And a lot of people would say like, well, what's taking place in Xinjiang with all these biometrics, with all these things, trying to find out about your things to protect people from terrorism. So I don't have an issue with governments making sure that we are safe. The issue is if the premise, if the initial situation is not clear, then what gives you the right? Do you know what I'm saying? What gives the yeah. government the right to start uh, uh, looking at people's communications and whatnot? Um, right. And, and the interesting thing about this is a lot of people uh, supported these, these rights of the government to look into their communications when initially they're all about freedom. America is all about freedom. You don't tell me what to do. You can't tell me that. You do, that's my private, yeah? Yeah. But yeah. now, because of the emotion that was created uh, on 9-11, they actually accepted it. They actually said like, okay, yeah, sure. Look through my things. Help us stay safe. It's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> if, it, if it suits, I guess if it suits, it's okay, right? If it does not suit, it's not okay. Yeah, um, yeah, and this was the beginning of uh, a geopolitical agenda that is now being uncovered with two failed wars that basically came about because of this desire to avenge the 3,000 plus people who, who died um, when the towers collapsed um, and when the planes basically, some of them, um, crashed, uh, some of them just evaporated. Um, let's watch this short video, which will explain some of the, the reasons why I don't feel any, any shame in asking these questions.
Let me let me show you this video very quickly. About 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and, and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the joint staff who used, used to work for me. And one of the generals called me and he said, sir, you got to come in. You got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to Al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later, and by that time we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, and he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense's office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. I said, is it classified? He said, yes, sir. I said, <laughs> I said well, don't show it to me. Um, that video right there tells you the predisposition to just go to war. It was necessary for America to go to war, to control the region, to control the area, to, to do whatever they could to prevent the Russians from controlling it again, to prevent China from going in, to prevent any other entity, any other country in the nearby region to control Afghanistan. Um, resources, um, it's, it's key for countries um, who have an interest in the area to control Afghanistan. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm boarding right now, so I might need to, to get going. As I okay. said, this was going to be a very short live stream. But my final thought for, for you guys right there is the United States has found excuses in the past to go to war. They drive a rhetoric to create consent so that people support wars. I think that not seeing a plane in the Pentagon casts great doubts into the real reason why America went to war. And unfortunately, I like to connect it to what we're seeing right now. There's a lot of false narratives out there with regards to China that are trying to create an enemy um, out of thin air. That's, that's a concerning part. There is a path, there is a history, there is a record of the United States doing this, and we're seeing some of it taking place again right now with China. That's my final thought. Um, Noel, any final thoughts? Well, my final thoughts is to wish you a good flight, Fernando. We have Thank both you. to discuss. As always, uh, we'll see you very soon as we continue this uh, Wu Mao show series, as well as your War on China series with uh, Mario Cavolo. So yeah, that's my final thoughts. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys, you know what to do. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content of our channels make sure to subscribe and uh, final note before we say goodbye uh, condolences and regards to the innocent people that passed away in 9-11 and the people the innocent people who continue to die because of 9-11 that's it for today guys thank you so very much and until we see you again take it easy bye, bye. for now take care man. bye bye bye